Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. And what a wild week in the silver market. Saw some incredible volatility, which we will dig into tonight, um, as well as share some special announcements because, fortunately, as you are about to see here, if I can find my Safari browser, there it is. Tonight's video is actually sponsored by Silverfest 2020, which is coming your way September 12th to 13th. Actually, I should start saying the 11th to the 13th because this celebration of silver, silver investing, silver mining, and the incredible people that make the silver community as loyal, dedicated, and special as it is. Um, I think, you know, I really do believe that. Because, I mean, it takes a special type of mindset to stay in there through these bear markets, long one that we've just gone through. Um, and here you see the event schedule actually begins sun, uh, Friday, September 11th. Um, we'll have a login, uh, hangout. You can make some silver friends. Uh, then we're going to have movie night. <clears throat> I believe fully that I'm going to find a way to get the rights to stream trading places Friday night, which I thought would be a lot of fun. I've wondered if that is based off of the Hunt Brothers. Not been able to find that out yet, but that's the kind of fun thing we can talk about there. Um, and perhaps even more than any of the stuff I'll show you in a second there on the schedule. Um, you know, just that there's gonna be a place where you can talk with people who are seeing the same world, seeing the same reality and have conversations about all these exciting things that are happening in silver. And we will come back and dig in to some of the other things. I think you will love the schedule. But first, let's cover this exciting week in Silverland. Uh, there, uh, you can see on the Arcadia homepage, fortunately we have our Kitco ticker cranking. <clears throat> see silver took a shiner today. But look at some of that volatility here as it got down to 24 after reaching 29. Um, that was two days ago. Down a little bit today. Let's take a look at the full Kitco. Closing at 26.50, let's call it. And I do have, <coughs> excuse me, the August chart here, which I think is worth stopping and thinking about for a moment. I've been thinking about it this week because it's interesting, obviously, if you, uh, See up here, silver gets to $29. It rallied from 18 up to 29 in a rather short period of time, really basically four weeks. In fact, let's not guess. Let us pull up, uh, we'll get the last three months charts there. So here it was 18 bucks on July 3rd, July 7th. Today is August 14th. So you can say it's from July 7th, silver went up 50% in slightly, in less than five weeks, between four and five weeks. Um, so A, I would suggest that when an asset sits below $20 for four years and then on no particular news, I mean, yes, there's the COMEX deliveries. Yes, there's the stunning SLV. Yes, there's the COVID mine shutdowns and, and the massive surge in demand. But I mean, that's been going on for a couple of months now. So why particularly that day? Um, if I figure that one out one day, I'll let you know. But when you see it just sit there like that for years and then within five weeks just explodes, see there were some big days there and uh, then really moved quickly from 24 up to uh, 29, gee, I guess, was that only three days? Uh, it's all happening so fast. So think about the difference though. Obviously people are wondering uh, right about this point, oh my God, is I miss out selling my silver? Did it go up too fast? Um, and I guess my thought is that if you imagine over the next five years, I'm guessing there's a good chance there's gonna be a handful of days where the silver price is down, probably even much more than the $5 in total that in that move that we saw this week. Um, 
yet within the context, it's ima just imagine if instead of this trajectory over five days, if it had just gone slowly up, the tone this week would have been completely different and people would have been talking about the incredible silver rally rather than, you know, one, the, the way we hear the coverage of, oh, is the pullback on, is the bubble popped? Uh, and, and by all means, which is not to say that my interpretation or my version of it is accurate, please find what makes sense to you. I'm just pointing out different perspectives that I consider. Um, and the reason I do that, I think there's so much to the mental side of this where in the end it's 2650. And if the trajectory over the last five days is heavily influencing the trading conditions, I mean, if you're a short-term trader and you have a system, great. Um, but I mean, what just has always made a lot of sense to me is understanding why the Fed can never raise interest rates, seeing they don't even pretend to have an interest in doing so anymore um which is why it even early on when i got back in or got into metals uh 2009 and then when it accelerated in 2011 i didn't think it was coming back yet it's not a decision i regret i mean obviously if i'd known the price was going to come down that much <laughs> you know if you knew that was going to happen of course i would have done it differently yet to the degree of you know, structuring things and leaving a career that I didn't think would exist much longer so that, you know, now uh, being in the position where, I mean, I don't, and as you'll hear this weekend in the calls with Dave Kranzler and Andy Schechtman, even when, even when silver is $50, I mean, I don't know, am I going to start buying Tesla shares then if they're $2,500 and the feds are still running in a hyperinflation campaign? Um, you know, it, I think we're approaching that point where at some point it's like, you don't want any amount of dollars if they're just going to be devalued even further the next day, uh, which I know is hard for many people to grasp. And by all means, that's not any sort of fear tactic. I, I, as the days go on and this is again, not factual information, just a little slight, slight aside, as they say, but the idea to me that, you know, if without the dollar, which really has facilitated more nefarious acts in history than anything that I've ever read or heard about, and I'll bet an ounce of silver on that one. Um, should I say that? Yeah, well, why not? I'll bet, an, I mean, sure, because if someone <laughs> figures out something that has done more damage in the world, Okay, maybe that's a little vague. So we won't bet an ounce of silver, but I think you get what I'm saying here. Um, I know Schechtman got himself in trouble when he was saying silver's rise and someone pointed out a higher rise. I don't, maybe there is something more nefarious than the dollar, but uh, especially when you see that so much of this government fraud is facilitated simply because they can print money. The idea that society is just going to completely melt down without the mafia holding a gun to our heads. Um, and I think personally COVID provided at least an interesting data point. Um, I will also mention that when I lived in Greece back in early 2014, um, supposedly when their currency was melting down, I've never, I mean, everyone seemed to own five houses and I've never met people who had spent more time outside having fun and I think there's a lot to be said for human nature and that keeping us in fear, thinking without the dollar, without the government entitlements, that without the government giving us our, our, our income, um, that, again, just my opinion, um, but I think a lot of that's based on fear and that we actually, because what, I mean, let's say there was some sort of issue with the food supply, well, if you have a ton of unemployed people and they're all hungry and need food, I mean, you know, one guy's probably willing to drive the truck, maybe you give him some carrots or whatever. But I mean, if we're really worried about that point and that where do we get food, do we have these things, but you have all this labor that is being outsourced by a uh, corporation economy. Um, and that's what has always been so beautiful about Austrian economics to me, the way that free markets can heal these things so quickly when the government isn't 
continuing to exacerbate the injury. Um, so anyway, uh, that's just my view is not to say that's correct or how it will go, but that is what I've been thinking about on that one. And anyway, um, you can see the price is going to go up. There are probably days it's going to be going down, but um, I would say, hey, you can always check into the Arcadia Silver Bug Therapy Hotline where we walk silver investors back off, off, is it off the ledge or on the ledge? Back inside, off the ledge, into safe harbors. Um, you know, because in the end, uh, hopefully, whether the silver price goes up or down, it can be exciting. But um, and that's something that I really focused on. And, and I try to always phrase things, not telling anybody else what to do. But in the last couple of years, because I used to have those days where I'd see the price get torched and I'd be not fun to be around. And I just think that when we're able to cut down on that or even eliminate it, um, so many more good things happen. And anyway, we will leave today's metaphysical musings at that. Although again, you can hop into that Napoleon, Napoleon Hill style mastermind at Silverfest and talk about how this week the gold price ended about 1945-ish. So back below the 2000 level, uh, be interesting to see uh, when it heads back up there and perhaps not surprising that it didn't head up straight up and stay there. Um, so anyway, there is the gold price. And now a... Uh, Quick article from my friends over at Chris at Silver Investing News had the top silver mining stops versus top exploration stocks. Few names here, uh, Canisil Resources, which I'm not too familiar about with uh, Metallic Minerals. I know, uh, I believe it was Maurice Jackson of Proven and Probable that was saying some good things. And here, Dolly Varden Silver, which if we may stop on this one for a moment. I had Sean Kunkin of Dolly Varden on the show a couple months back. I was pretty darn impressed and actually caught up with him last weekend. It looks like they may be joining us as a sponsor on the show, which is uh, exciting if that does become the case. Because even aside from that, um, as you've heard me say before, I'm not the expert at digging through the balance sheet and which is why, you know, I always phrase my comments about the miners and refer you guys to people that can provide a higher level of analysis. I'm learning them. Um, although partly what I love doing is just looking at the person running it and see how I feel about them. And Sean was one of the more impressive ones that I've come across. And uh, so I am a fan of Dolly Varden. And uh, fortunately, I think that we you guys will be hearing more from Sean and we'll be having him more on the show. So anyway, one, uh, let me phrase it like this, to do your due diligence on. Uh, this is another deal that Eric Sprott has invested in. Um, and uh, again, you can see, we'll link at the end to, uh, the interview Sean did a couple months ago. And I think that'd be fun for you to see what he said then. It was a great interview, a lot of fun talking to him and how that played out, which is one of the nice things. These things are online. Vino, Silver and Gold. I've met someone from there before. Uh, don't know too much about them. Endeavor, uh, actually getting to know a little bit better. I think they may be at Silverfest. Uh, Fortuna, Dave Kranzler was a big fan. So a nice list here, just something I, by, as, as always, consult your, uh, you know, professional gurus or whatever they call them these days. Maybe not go to, uh, maybe, maybe, I, I'm, I don't know, what's the right way to phrase this? Maybe don't go to your JP Morgan broker and run these names by them. But anyway, I will behave myself. We'll leave it there. Um, uh, here's an interesting one. And I know we have a lot of first majestic silver fans out there, myself included. I have a very high tech chart as you can see here. Um, but let us start here in row three, where you can see that December 30th, 2019, end of last year, 
Silver is at $17.93, and First Majestic was at $12.41. I thought it was a little odd that when silver was up $10 from that, up at $28.20 on August 6th, First Majestic was only up a dollar. Come on, mock trading math. 23. Uh, although then it gets even more extreme. You now have silver. This was uh, yesterday. Yesterday you had silver at 27.30. So silver was up 50% on the year, $9. And one of the largest silver producers was down on the year from 1241 to 1197. So all of you guys that are asking if I'm noticing First Majestic Silver is not up, I certainly am. Um, I wonder if that large short position on First Majestic has something to do with it. Uh, and my guess is, well, this, was the, this has been the case before. I remember even, uh, maybe it was like late 2011 and into 2012, I felt that it seemed like a lot of similar things like this you would see, maybe not as pronounced or as extreme as this. And my guess is that it'll, I wonder if it will be similar to silver where there's some point where whoever is short starts feeling it. And in the same way we saw silver go from 18 to, uh, 27 or even 29 in less than five weeks. Um, keep in mind, I actually uh, included one row earlier here. Here was the peak in August of 2016. At that point, silver got up to $20.71. And First Majestic was $18.80, which would be a glorious price before August expiration cycle, I might add. Um, I'm not saying that will happen, although um, if it does, we will have a free silver giveaway that night. Although I'll do you one better. I will say whether it does or not, let's still give away some silver that night. So if someone can remind me, when is uh, August expiration? Um, and on this one, I'm going to ask you not to do so via email. Um, I think I'm doing pretty well at responding to just about everyone who sends in email. I really do want to get back to people, um, short, brief, uh, succinct emails that I can answer easily in few words are helpful whenever possible. Looks like uh, August expiration is the 21st, so uh, week from today, all right. So let's see here. Um, yeah, anyway, let's give away some silver next week. And uh, by the way, and we'll, we're going to get back, I'm going to wrap up today's video with the rest of the Silverfest schedule. Uh, I think it will be on the website by the time you're watching this. Again, free for people to attend. I wanted to create something that, regardless of what position you're in financially, whether you want to just come and learn, whether you want to invest or you're looking for mining stocks or how to buy silver, what type of silver to buy or anything about the silver market. This is not designed just so that you come and buy stuff, but that you can learn in an environment where you can ask questions. Uh, I thought that part of the big short where they uh, talked about how people often felt like they were, too, they were gonna be stupid if they asked the question and uh, that's a big part of why I left Wall Street to create something where you can feel comfortable at whatever level you're at and uh, know that, in fact, I will guarantee you an answer. So if you don't find, if you have questions at Silverfest and you do not get them answered, uh, I don't know how that would be possible with, because partly in addition to the, the known experts that come on the show and that you hear, I mean, it's really awesome how educated and informed the audience is. Uh, so again, each night when these videos get posted at 9 p.m. Eastern, except for Sunday at noon Eastern, there is a live chat with them. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun uh, interacting and meeting a lot of you virtually. Um, and also a great place to meet others and you know get questions answered. So again, I'm getting to as many of them as I can. Um, but keep in mind, there are other smart people and it's really quite a community. Um, so 
anyway, and you can ask about things like first majestic. Uh, and I, I think my guess is that there's going to be some day where it catapults higher. We'll see, but I mean, otherwise, if it doesn't, I mean, you know, if one day they're selling fifty or seventy-five dollars silver that they're getting out of the ground for thirteen or fourteen bucks, uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll pay the biggest dividend ever, or hopefully, uh, we actually have some first majestic panels at Silverfest. Hopefully, we'll be seeing Keith there uh, and uh, can find out more about that. But um, that's my view on that, which uh, we'll see how it plays out. Another quick one here. Uh, some of you may know, this is Joe Grandy, who I met last year at the New Orleans Investment Conference. Um, and for everyone who is out enjoying the book, The Big Silver Short, um, perhaps we could give Joe a little round of applause here, because Joe is a big supporter of what we're doing here really amazing man and it was nice to see joe who's a longtime gold and silver investor supporter of gata supporter of gata and it was he was invited on to a pad podcast so let's take a look in just a second here of handsome joe grandy talking about gold and how to start so again uh you can see the title there if you want to send this to anyone who's just getting into it um but i'll let you hear for yourself having to work much, much harder to make the same amount of real dollars. So is that why their standards of living are so low around the world? Yes, very much so. You know, we've been blessed in America. We don't realize it. You know, although we do so many good things in America, by being the reserve currency of the world, we get, you know, we get much more value for our dollars that we spent. But also... So that's a little snippet of Joe. Again, you can find this on the old school channel, Patrick Rooney. Um, and Joe's just someone that I find quite inspirational and enjoy learning from and being around. And uh, if you're looking for something else to listen to later tonight, uh, I would certainly check that out. So real quick before, uh, oh, well, we still got Silverfest schedule, but here's a quick look at the SLV and the Silver Trust editions. As you can see, uh, it was not a record setting number, but that 12.8 million ounces, that's still a big one. As you see here, pulling out a little bit, not the biggest, but still quite a chunk. And before we wrap up, I think we covered everything else here, except I was going to go through, while we're on here, the rest of the Silverfest schedule. Everybody just want to know what happened with the silver price this week. All right, I guess you don't have to stay around, although you might miss something cool. So fortunately, we're starting the day off, getting a great mindset. We're going to meditate. I will sit there with my eyes closed. You can watch me if you'd like. I'm not ashamed of it. And then Yara, our marketing director that many of you have been meeting, anyone who's been uh, purchasing physical gold and silver through the Arcadia at Miles Franklin email address. Um, and Yara is the one who's been helping you with that. Um, also a Reiki master and a yoga teacher. So we're gonna get our mind and body in a nice state of mind. Welcome to Silverfest intro, the big silver short. Not only is the book underway, but the short squeeze appears to be underway. Then David Morgan, the silver guru, joining us for the state of the silver market. And something I'm personally proud of, right by 945 Eastern, that's it. If you're on the, on the West Coast, that means silver is going to be given away at 645. So set the alarm clock. I don't think there's more than a two hour stretch in the entire two and a half day show without us giving away silver. I understand how important that is. And certainly, you know, I, I think there's something to it where if we always talk about silver being money and yet, you know, we're, you know, we can make our hoarders, uh, at least with the silver at times, but, um, you know, and I won't tell anyone else what to do, but I'll, I'm just gonna give away silver. So come and get some free silver, win silver, Hear how much COVID, uh, silver was lost during the COVID mining shutdown with Jeff Clark and David Morgan. That is going to be a hot one. Our SLV and the Silver Trust really adding the metal. Andrew McGuire, I, 
I believe is some in the process of being confirmed. I'm going to make sure there's some time. Most of these will be live. Some will be pre-recorded. Um, now I took out names that are not confirmed, but hopefully Alistair McLeod on that one, uh, run on Comex silver happening now. Uh, hopefully Ronan Manley will be joining us there. Uh, silver premiums and supply chain update for our physical silver market portion. We have Andy Sheckman, Patrick Vieira. Um, then we're going to give away some books. Lunchtime. And uh, it's nice. All of uh, we're modeling it after the Sprott conference where there are the video booths. So if you want to go in and there's stocks you're interested in, uh, a lot of the silver stocks are going, companies are going to be there with representatives. So you can ask questions directly to management, which you really can't do in most other industries. And uh, I have, uh, well, we're that, we just finished this part this week. So we'll get, we'll have a better idea of who's coming next week. But I think a lot of the silver stocks that you're interested in will be there. How to pick great silver stocks with Kranzler and David Morgan. Another coffee break, more silver then what's the price of First Majestic when silver crosses 50? Which stocks will go up the most? Um, we will have some silver miner company profile videos. Roundtable with Dave Kranzler and Peter Spina. <clears throat> For everyone who enjoyed Florian Grumace, what a fun talk last night. Provi he'll provide an in European perspective on silver. Ask the experts panel. Then night two, assuming I figure out, uh, no, saying no assuming we'll figure out a way to stream the big short um and then maybe we can mastermind and figure out how to create our own big silver short movie and get everybody involved some way in the film then sunday you have more meditation and yoga although this one i'm excited about for anyone who's into metaphysics and napoleon hill uh, we can just sit there together and visualize life with 50 dollars, 100 dollars silver and um, I don't know, maybe it'll influence something or maybe it'll just be fun. When do you sell, sell your silver? JP Morgan, should they be allowed to trade? And a whole lot more. Um, you can rewind these last couple seconds slowly. There's the option trading panel right after the Laura Stein silver ounce giveaway. What really happened with the hunts? Warren Buffett. Um, Oh, we got Ed Griffin confirmed last night for the History of Silver panel. Um, so you can see uh, there's a bunch of good stuff. We'll be filling in as I get confirmation, some more of these guests. But a lot of these amazing people that you see on the show and um, that I've enjoyed studying for so long. So I think it will be quite a party and a big part of it is really just having something positive and fun that people in the silver community can really celebrate. So with that said, thank you as always for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I will look forward to seeing you at Silver Fest in less than a month.